All this dirt I never let my mama know Hit a lick of brick, it's like a pot of gold Your girl wants to meet me Your man's a snitch, they got him on PC My son is in GP Playing some cards or watching some TV Hey yo, I told y'all before My bro Dub H.E. out of Baltimore Spit that fire You heard, go follow him on Instagram And tell him Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man Sent you Escape of disorder, asylum is what they seek Yet this economy's weak Like John Gotti said, the money's out in the street You need the heart of Balboa, the eye of the tiger Hey yo, make sure you check that rare air chief Cherokee Featuring Brav the Guard on Spotify Coming up, right, you know, I, I was in the streets Of course, you know, I was, I was getting money, I was in the streets I was selling drugs, doing all that, you know what I'm saying That, that was, you know, that, that, that's how I was making money So, with selling drugs, you know, comes beef now, I'm gonna I'm, I'm give you a good story, actually. I never, I don't think I never told a story. Hey, yo, LAZ, man. Shout out to the bro, Macadon. Shout out to Sugar Hill and the whole Harlem. The whole NYC, you heard? If you from Harlem out there, though, getting them comments, let me know what block, what Ave, what projects, what street you out there rapping. You heard? If you ain't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe, hit that bell. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man running around the hood like He-Man. Let's get it. And then I got packed up out of green and they sent me to Riverview. And Riverview, that shit was a riot jail, bro. That shit was a riot jail, yo. Now, by now, it's 93. And that blood shit is in full effect. It's non-tray. And it's non-tray gangsters running around in the jail system now. And by now, the Latin Kings have, now they have formulated themselves to prominence throughout the state a little something. I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot of Kings, yo. What year you was in green? Nine, six and nine, seven. Okay, so I'm gonna assume it was the old side. I'm yeah. assuming it was the old side. And you know, um, the old was, side is tore down, man. And, you know, it got doors on the bathroom. They was crazy to have doors on the bathroom. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it was on the old side. It was near the gym. Um, I, feel like, I feel like it was near the gym. Yeah, the old, that's the old side. Yeah, I feel like it was near the gym. And it was, and it was like not too far from the yard either. You had to hit the walkway and all that. But it was on the yard. I don't even know why them niggas kicked me out. I can't even why they kicked me out of green. Yo, them niggas shitted on me in green. Yo, <laughs> them niggas sent me to Canada from green. Oh, shit. Why the fuck they kicked me out of green? Let me think. I just remember, I do remember them niggas sent me to fucking Riverview from green, yo. Bro, up. Uh, you know what that shit is? Yeah, that shit is all the way up there. Oh my God, them niggas shitted on me, B. I was like, yo, what the fuck? So you said, you said your mans in them had popped somebody locker? Oh yeah, my little mans have had, they had popped somebody locker, right? And I got at them niggas for that shit, because I was like, yo, we don't steal, my nigga. We don't sneak thief, we don't steal, we rob. If that's what we doing... We robbing, we not stealing, yo. That stealing shit, sneak thieving and all that is a form of cowardice. We don't do that, yo. But why the fuck did I tell them niggas that shit, yo? Because <laughs> I sent these little niggas on a robbery spree after that, yo. Well, when you got to the jail, you already knew people there or, or new nigga, you knew well, dudes yeah, from no, Kaxaki? No, I knew, well, it was, it was, it was mad dudes that had left the cat and went to green because the reality is the cat had a lot of dudes that was that first of all I want to feel like I want to feel like I born had got shipped to green from the cat I could be wrong but I, I, I feel like they I, I be left he left the cat and went to a medium and so most of the dudes like after, after a certain after a certain amount of time you know your classification drop. If you're chilling, your classification gonna drop. And so I had 
I had a couple of fights and all that, like little nonsense or whatever. Put a few dudes in their place. You know what I'm saying? What are you talking about in green um, or in cat sack? No, no, in the cat. But but in the cat, that, but you know, like, like I said, like that nonsense. Like I said, by the time I left the cat, I was in the honor dome. So obviously I was chilling for a long time if, if I was in the honor dome and then they sent me the green. But when I got the green, that shit was like going back to the four building. Cause green was full of adolescence. I mean, young niggas, yo. Yo, green was full of young niggas, yo. Green was full of fucking adolescence, bro. Straight up and down, yo. Niggas that was 18. I think I think most dudes in green was like like literally from 18 to 21. Yeah, nah, it was <clears throat> you know, they were sending people straight from DFY to green. So dudes was coming there straight 16 cash. 16. It's exactly. Like like green you're right. Green was a release facility for dudes that aged out of juvenile. I, 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 I like Goshen and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Harlem Valley, Goshen, they came straight to Green. Right. And, and those, those is maxes. Harlem Valley is a max. Harlem Valley is a max. And, and Goshen is a max for juveniles. So the, the kids that they were sending to Green from, 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 from those maxes, they was wow young niggas. They was wow young boys coming from from, and, and so by now, if it's 93, 92, going into 93, I've been up north three years. I've been up north three years. So you could say it's, it's safe to say that I did some mellowing out, especially from my adolescent four building shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot of full building shit going on in the cat but you know once I had went to the industry dome in the cat you around old timers everybody in the industry pretty much got 10 and better under their belt everybody in there got for the most part they got 10 and better under their belt them niggas got time in so nobody in there is on no kid type of time everybody is they getting good money you know what I'm saying? They, they getting good money. We smoking good. We eating good. And you not really trying to wild out when you in the industry, Dom, because you already got past that. And so for me, by now, um, I might be 19 now. I might be or still 18 going on 19. But I done did a lot of maturing by now. And so... Is there like a, a, a D dome in um green? <clears throat> Definitely. D one and D two like... is D one and D two is a hop, skip, and a jump from the yard, from the old side yard. Right. So I feel like I was in G. I feel like I was in G dome, maybe G one and G two. Yeah, G one and G two is behind the yard with F one and F two, and it's only four dorms back there in that little cut back there. And then the rest of the dorms is elsewhere. I feel like I might have been in, I might have been in one of them, them joints, and 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 all on the G side. You don't remember was, the first day you got there though? How that shit what, was coming out of Kaksaki and then what, going into a dorm? Well, 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 coming out of the cat, first of all, like niggas are already handling you different because they know you just came out the cat. And and most of them dudes in green, they shook to go to the cat. They shook to go to the cat. Them niggas don't want to go to the cat. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of dudes that they talk that shit, but niggas ain't want to go to cat sacking because they, they, you, you hear, you hear about what the fuck is going on over there, especially dudes that come from green, with that medium shit, with that high school shit, basically. You know what I'm saying? You leave a high school and you come into college with high school shit. Niggas ain't having that, that high school shit in college, basically. And I feel like I left college and went to high school. And so my first, I, I remember I didn't have my property when I first got the green. I ain't know they was going to do that to me. You know what I'm saying? Like on some property shit. But when I got there, it was mad Harlem homies there. So, um, like some, there was like a lot of Harlem homies there, older dudes that was there. You know what I'm saying? And um, when they seen me and shit, 
you know, and it was a couple of dudes from the four building. So when I seen like my homies or whatever have you, you know what I'm saying? They're like, yo, why you stay down? I'm like, yo, they still got, I ain't get my property yet. So I wait a couple of days. I'm chilling in the dorm, quiet storming. I'm not really, I'm observing because I've never been the medium, number one. And then number two, I'm a little apprehensive because I ain't been in no dorms in years. Now, I was in a, I was in a dorm in, in the honor block in, in Kasaki. But again, these is dudes that got 20 years in. These is dudes that got 15 joints in. Everybody chilling. I get to this medium, these niggas is loud. You can hear music blasting everywhere. Everybody got their music turned up all the way. That's back then when you get you a big pair of headphones and everybody can hear your music. And so I'm, 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 I'm just, again, the same way I did in a cat, I'm doing the knowledge. And to do the knowledge, to look, listen, observe, and respect. That's all I'm on. Look, listen, observe, and respect. I'm watching everything going on around me. But um, the police, you know, the police came to me and was giving me some fucking medium sermon about, oh, you know, you're no longer in Kaksaki. You know, you don't have to... You know, you don't, you don't have to carry yourself with that, that crazy shit they got going on over there. You know, this is a medium. And I remember, um, I remember it was like a, they had me in like some type of orientation. They put me through some orientation. And I think you go to orientation for a couple of days, maybe. You remember that shit? Orientation, yeah, like you mean from your dorm going to the school building? Right. Yeah, yeah, they right. do that. I think they do that shit. Yeah. Right, right. I, I remember going to orientation, and then, like, orientation, they you wind up getting your program. They designate you, tell you what programs you're going to go to and all of that shit. So I really was chilling in green. <laughs> I was really chilling in green, but then I, I start running into mad dudes. I think I ran into my man, um, my man, um, P.I. for four green. I ran into my man P.I. from Fort Green, P.I. and K.I. They was brothers. P.I. and K.I., they both get busy too. Um, but I think P.I. and K.I. was in the cat. And like I said, even, I mean in Green, but even from the Fort building, remember my first dudes that I was meeting, they was all Fort Green dudes pretty much, the dudes that I met first. You know what I'm saying? And so I get to the, um, the green there's a couple of homies from four green up in there and um i'm in the i'm in the um i remember being in the gym one time and my two little mans that i told them gu gu and me i told them like yo we don't steal my nigga what man you talking we about the baby man from all of them right G gu and me and i'm like yo b we don't steal my nigga we gon' we rob, we take. If you gonna take something from a nigga, take it from him. But you can't, y'all. Y'all can't, y'all can't do that, y'all. I can't even let y'all do that, cause you gonna get a stain on your name. You know what I'm saying? They gonna call you a sneak thief, and you don't want that shit on your name. You don't want that shit on your name. It's better to be a robber bandit, straight like that. It's better to be a robber bandit than to be a sneak thief, yo. It's better to be feared for like, yo, these niggas that run up on you with a draft bag and pull out them bangers until you run your shit. It's better to be that than to be designated a sneak thief. But me telling them niggas that shit was like giving these niggas the green light to turn into arm robbers, yo. These little niggas started bucking, yo. <laughs> they started robbing. <laughs> They started robbing everything. B, they came to me and was like, yo, you, yo, yo, you got an ox now. When I left the cat, remember I told you I was making toast in the cat. I was making toast in the cat. I'm making bangers and burners in the cat. So I left the cat with gym stars. I left the cat with um two of the joints that I made in sheet metal, right? And I had a nice little, a nice little, like a little flathead that I stashed in my Quran. Cause you know, the one thing the police, they don't really fuck with your Quran like that. Like they, that's the one thing on the search. Bibles, they'll go through them Bibles, but them Qurans, they seen too many dudes flip out over them Qurans. So they'll give you a pass. They'll just make you flip through the pages. You know what I'm saying? But I had stuck the flatty 
in the, the back binder of the Quran and then I I like glued it down so you you couldn't really feel it, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was stuffed all the way with tissue. You couldn't really feel it if you put your hands on it. So I got the green. I had hammers when I got there. I had learned, you know, from older dudes, like, take that toast with you everywhere you go, yo. Because it's better, it better get caught with it than without it, e even in jail. Like, you don't want to catch no new charges and none of that, yo. But you definitely don't want to catch no buck 50 because you didn't have no toast. So I took toast with me. And so when they came to me and they wanted some hammers and all that, I'm like, all right, I got you. But what y'all niggas about to do? Yo, we, we, we about to run up on this kid. I'm like, all right, go do your thing, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but that was bad on my part, yo, because I was influencing them, yo. I was influencing them to do all the wrong shit. And, and I wasn't doing that shit, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, if you're my little man and that's what you're doing and you're going to take, well, then go do what you're going to do. And so they was running up on dudes with it, with draft bags. They would run up in your cube with the draft bag and throw the draft bag at you. Like you'll fill that shit up. And so they ran up in this one kid cube and made him fill the whole draft bag up. He had just came from the package room with the brand new sneakers, hoodies. Your man got 35 pounds in the package. They robbed that nigga for everything. And I was like, yo, man, let me hand y'all some game, yo. When y'all robbing niggas, man, it's almost like a dice game, man. If you take all of a dude money in a dice game, you know where I come from? They give you a walk. They literally leave you with a little something. If I'm in a dice game with you and I crack you for $10,000, I'm going to give you 500 back. Because if you leave empty-handed... If those dudes like that that leave completely empty-handed, they most likely to come back with a gun, or they more mo they more they likely to pull out a gun right then and there. They likely to pull out a gun right then and there, especially if you done gambled and took every single dime from them. And so we call it a walk. You give them something to get home with. You don't want to send a man home completely broke, especially if you took a large sum of money from him. You know, in my hood, we give you a walk. If I took a thousand dollars from you, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars back, man. Just so you could, so you can get home, so you can jump in a cab and get home. So you can, cause some dudes will gamble until they empty their pockets out. You know what I mean? And so I give you a walk, and I told them like, yo, man, if y'all gonna be taken from these dudes, man, leave a nigga a walk. Yo, don't take everything from a nigga, B, because that's gonna make him go to the police. You done took everything that the dude got in his locker. His mama done sent him 35 pounds of food and he can't even eat a can of tuna fish. Like, don't do it like that, yo. Don't don't take everything from dudes because these are the same dudes that's gonna wind up telling on you, yo. We go to the gym. I remember us going to the gym, yo. And this kid had some Jordans. Remember the Bugs Bunny Jordans? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. the hair Jordans. Yeah. Yeah, this kid had the hair Jordans on. He came, he just came up in the gym with the Bugs Bunny Jordans on. He had on a brand new Jordans. He had on a red hoodie, and he had on the the, the red Bugs Bunny Jordans. Now, and man, they beat that boy out of his sneakers. Man, your man was running so fast, he ran up out of one of the sneakers. He was running from them, and one of them just came off his foot, and they beat him about the other sneaker. And so me and my partners are sitting in the gym on the bleachers just watching the whole shit go down and laughing really and i'm like yo y'all dudes is wilding man like y'all like every day like yo you said rob and don't steal so that's what we doing and i'm like yo b i what the fuck did i done created yo <laughs> what the fuck have i what the fuck i done, I done initiated i done created with that these dudes like really trying really trying to rob everything that moved they see they see you got on new shit they trying to rob you. They on the walkway, Rob. Remember how the walkway was? Mm -hmm. The walk, the police is like scattered. So the police could be like really, really far away. Especially if you're going over there by G, E, and F, I think it is, because it's the far side of the jail. And so it really ain't no police over there. And so they took advantage of every little moment of that shit. And then I remember my man Ruggs came there, my man Damon from my hood. And he came there and he was telling me that like, somebody in his house was fronting on, on him. I don't know, I don't recall if it was Kings or whoever it was, 
I just know he told me somebody in this house fronting on me. And now, you know, just like most dudes that got a little bit of respect somewhere, if somebody from your hood come to the jail and niggas is fronting, then we got to step to that, yo. We got to step to that and we got to let the whole jail know that it's hands off where you're concerned. So my man Damon Ruggs came to the yard and he just, I remember him just telling me like, yo, these niggas try to front on me in my house, yo. I'm like, all right, come to the yard, B, and tell them to come to the yard too. And so he came to the yard and at the time it was me and a gang of dudes from my hood and we pulled up in one of them yards, the, the yard with the basketball course on it. Yeah, that's the big yard. Yeah, we pulled up in the yard with the basketball courts on it or whatever, and um, he pointed them dudes down, and that was I think that was the first time, that was the first time I used the banger. Up, um, yeah, that was one of the first times I used the banger. That was the first time I used the banger, up north rather. I had I had some I had um, I think I had some fiberglass. And I poked, I poked that kid up. Like whoever was fronting on him, we just formed Voltron on them niggas. He pointed the kid out, and we poked money up right there in the yard. And that nigga ran to the CO shack. You know them little shacks they be sitting in? Yeah. He he ran over to the shack or whatever, and he made himself scarce. And they they and then they they took him, they took him about the yard. He ain't tell though. He ain't tell though. He ain't tell. He got banged up. And they, they took him out the yard, and then they called the early go back. And then they called the early go back because your man had like he was bleeding from his head and all type of shit. So they sent him on the early go back, and that was the end of problems for my homie. My homie had no more issues after that shit. What he said you the dude saying? was doing, he was he was just he was in the dorm room fronting on him. Yeah, he just said that they was fronting on him in the dorm. So they, they just was fronting on him in the dorm. So, I mean, at that time, in my mind, you from Sugar Hill, I don't give a fuck what they did. I don't give a fuck what they did. Because in my mind, what was more important to me, that the report get back to the hood, that when you pulled up where I was at, they could step to their business. That's what was more important to me. That once you call your sister, once you call your brother, once you call whoever you're going to call in the neighborhood, yeah, I had a problem in the yard, but Malik and them came outside. They took care of that shit. That's that's the report I need to get back to the hood. That's what's important to me. Let it let it be known when you came up in the spot and you was with me, the niggas tried to front on you. We stepped to that. We stepped to that. We sent money and them up out of there. You know what I'm saying? And I, now that I think about it, that's probably why they sent my dumb ass up out of there. <laughs> He probably didn't tell on me directly. He probably didn't tell on me directly, but not too long after that, because I was in there um, with Dougie Lime, and um, Lime is a dude from my hood or whatever, but you know, at that time, he was known to be a dude that always got the weed, always, always got it. So we used to always come out to the yard, you know what I'm saying? We come out to the yard, and, and puff out with lime and all that, you know what I'm saying? We, we come up, and, and so he was an older G. I mean, he is an older G, because he had a rap sheet going back to like 77. He was an older G for real. And so um, I was walking with, I was to be spending around the yard with him for the most part, you know what I mean? Just after that, I really was, I did a lot of, I ain't really wild out too much in green. I was chilling, but I was around a lot of wow shit in green because it was young boys there, yo. And then I got packed up out of green and they sent me to Riverview. And Riverview, that shit was a riot jail, bro. That shit was a riot jail, yo. Now, by now, it's 93. And that blood shit is in full effect. It's non trey and it's nine trade gangsters running around in the jail system now. And by now, the Latin Kings have, now they have formulated themselves to prominence throughout the state a little something. 
I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot of kings, yo. It was a lot of kings in that jail, and it was a lot of and it was a lot of Neadas in that jail. Straight up, it was a lot of kings and Neadas, and there was a few, just a few, of the Dominican power dudes. It was just a few of them, but as far as kings and Neadas, they had numbers, and they also had they used to be enemies. But for the sake of unity, which was wise on their behalf, they came up with a truce. They came up with a truce so that whenever the king, whenever the Nyatas had beef with the Muslims or the gods, the kings would move with them. But at that time, most of the gods, the dudes that was God, they started turning home. Most of the dudes that was that was God body. They start turning triple O. So they know most of the dudes that they went from God body to throwing up big bees. And so in Riverview, first of all, that shit is near Canada. And it's a fuck up jail. Riverview, when I got there, bro, the jail was brand new. When I tell you the jail was brand new, I mean literally the police told me to pick any bed I wanted because there wasn't nobody in the dorm. Ain't them wasn't that shit double bunk? Nah, nah, when I got there, they had double bunk houses. They had double bunk houses, but when I got there, it was primarily single bunk. And again, the police told me, "Yo, pick whatever bed you want." So I picked the corner cube, like they had the cube in the corner, because the corner joints is the biggest cubes. So I went in the, all the way in the back and picked the cube in the corner or whatever. Plus, I used to smoke trees out my window. I would get the fan. Remember, you know, the clip fans that they sell in commissary? Mm-hmm. Yeah, niggas get away with murdering them corner cubes because it take a while for the police <laughs> to get to you. You can take, see the whole dome. Take a while, bro. Take a while. I'm all the way on the other side in the other corner. It take a while for them to get over there. After they do the, after the police do the count, it's on, bro. It's on, bro. I'm gonna I'm get, I'm gonna get two fans. I'm gonna point them fans out the window. We got the baby powder. We got one person standing outside the cube, blasting the baby powder up in the air, and we holding the joint behind the fan, and the fan is blowing the weed smoke out the window. <laughs> we living. <laughs> We living, we living. The fans, we got two fans back to back. The fans is blowing the weed smoke out the window. We living. I got plenty of plenty of commissary. We living. But it was a lot of riots in that jail, yo. That shit was a riot jail. First they sent me to Watertown. As a matter of fact. You ever been to that shit? Nah, that shit by Buffalo, right? Oh my God. Yo, that's the one of the worstest shits I've ever been in my life. The condition of the jail is falling apart. They got pipes. The pipes ain't underground. The pipes is exterior. The pipes is everywhere. The snow gets so fucking hot. It snowed so bad, they had to bring the National Guard into the jail. <laughs> to, yo, bro, they had to bring the National Guard soldiers in the jail with the back hole, with the, with the, with the bulldozer shit. Yeah. The, 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 the snow was so high. They got these poles in the ground, and the poles in the ground um, is, is, it lets you know where that fire hydrant is at basically and the poles go up in the air about seven or eight feet you know what i'm saying so that in case of emergency you could find the fire hydrant the snow would come down over that pole That's okay the snow would come down over that pole and the police would have to find that pole so that they could find the fire hydrant so that the bulldozer don't knock over the fire hydrant and make the shit even worse because it's already snow everywhere and that shit is going to turn everything into ice. That shit 
was fucking horrible, yo. That shit was one of the worst spots I've been in. Niggas running around in jail selling free bus tickets. That shit was terrible. But that's when I ran into my Grammy Rollavelle when I got to Watertown. Yeah, he had the shit in the smash. He had a lot of that shit in the smash. So when I got there, like, I really was, I kind of was comfy in terms of everything I needed. Like, getting what I needed in the jail, he made sure I had everything I needed as soon as I got there. Because they hold your property for like a week. And so you be dead on everything. You got a state coat. You ain't got no long johns. You ain't got nothing. You fucked up in the game until you get your property, yo. But I left I left Watertown, and they sent me farther up to Riverview. And Riverview is so far upstate that you could see, you could almost see the St. Vincent Bridge from the jail. The St. Vincent Bridge is the jail, is the, is the bridge that go from America to Canada. That's how far up north that shit is. Yeah, I think that shit is, is the last. I think that shit is the last spot. I was in Franklin and the Camp last. Gabriel. Them shits as far as hell up there too. But I think oh, Riverview nasty. was the very last spot in the whole state. Yo, bro, nasty work. 12, 12 hour ride, ten hour, twelve hour ride. My shorty that was coming to see me at the time, she used to get a hotel room. Um, she would just come up there and get a hotel room in the town and just stay Saturday and Sunday and take the Sunday bus back because after that 10, 12 hour ride, you don't want to get right back on the bus. Shorty would just stay in a hotel and stay for two days and come see me Saturday and Sunday. This bus you know is that flipped over trying to get up yeah. to those jails in that hub up there like you feel yeah. me and people, people yeah. just died and all of that. Yeah, niggas got massive niggas have massive lawsuits and lost family members um just trying to get a visit. Lost family members of magic one kid that, that that you said I know a nigga that who who lost his mom, yo. He lost his mom's B. Imagine that. Your mom's coming to see you up top and the bus flip over and you lose your mom's. Incredibly traumatic shit. But Riverview that shit was a riot jail. But who was and rioting? The kings. First of all, it would be black blacks against Spanish. It, it would be black dudes against Spanish dudes. And then I remember these niggas created a gang. What the fuck was the name? The Brotherhood. <laughs> it was some dudes that created a gang called the Brotherhood. And so it was a lot of black dudes starting to fuck with it because they started hearing about, you know, the bloods uniting on the island. And at that time, again, it was so many kings and nietas, they was actually oppressing certain dudes. They was actually beginning to oppress dudes because they was black. Yeah, now if you they, wasn't back in them days, like in nine, three, nine, four, up north, if you wasn't Muslim or or God body running with the body, you yeah. was like fair game. Yeah, basically, basically, you know what I'm saying. And and so back then, you know what I mean, like I, I was I was always a part of the body. I was always a part of the body. You know what I'm saying, and. So I never had none of those issues. I had none of those issues anyway, but I definitely was a part of the body. And so we would go out out to the yard. We'd be chilling. They wouldn't front on us. They wouldn't front on us, but they would definitely, if you wasn't, like you said, if you wasn't affiliated, they, they was really like trying dudes and, and oppressing certain dudes. Because they was so, they was out populating black people. Like it was more no it was question. more it was more Latin brothers. In, in all of them jails Especially all the way up top like that Oh yeah and, and you know At that time I used to be explaining to dudes That those brothers was the new minority And dudes was to understand What I was saying Or where I was coming from But I was trying to let the, let, let dudes know Like, like hey bro Like these dudes are the new minority. They're like, what you mean? They outnumber us, homie. We outnumbered like three, three and four to one sometimes. We outnumbered. Now the reality is, 
most of them really wasn't popping. But, but, it don't matter if they all of them ain't really popping. If it's five to one, everybody ain't built to take on that many dudes by themselves. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they just not. And so, not just was they unifying, but they was arming them dudes. They was arming them dudes. They, they get them dudes a banger in a minute. And like, you know, you want to get down, go poke homeboy up. He had a problem with one of our brothers. Go poke him, you down with us. Simple. Simple. And, you know, but I ran into to a few of them dudes this one kid, I knew him from the cat. He knew what time it was with me. He was the king. So me and him never had no problems. And he let his peoples know what time it was. You know what I'm saying? And so, like I said, me and mine, we didn't have that many issues in terms of kings and yetas. But one time, this dude, Scooter, my man Scooter from the BX show, this nigga starts a fucking riot over a soccer game, bro. He decides that he wants to play soccer one day. And so now you know the brothers that play soccer is the West Indians. The Jamaican brothers that's there, dudes that might be from Belize, or they might be, you know what I'm saying? They might be some from one of them South American countries. They might be Brazilian. I mean, I ran into a couple of brothers that was from Brazilians or dark skinned Brazilians, you know what I'm saying, Jamaicans and Haitians, Trinidadians, they play soccer. So they outside playing soccer against the Me- against the Mexicans. It was mad Mexicans in the jail. Um for whatever reason. It was a lot of Mexicans in the jail. And, and but the other brothers that wasn't Mexican, the Latin brothers, they play soccer. That's what they play in South America and all that in the in the Latin jails. That's football to them. That's the real football. This dude, Scooter, decides that he want to play soccer. And he West Indian? Nah, he wasn't none of that. He was a Bronx <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't none of that. Scooter was from the BX on Webster Avenue somewhere, yo. He was, a, he was a, a, you know, African in America, yo. And this dude decided that he want to play soccer. and But you know, in soccer, those dudes will like sweep your feet. They'll go for the ball and sweep your feet from right up under you. So the dude comes slide and sweep Scooter feet. And Scooter hit the ground all hard and roll over five times. And he all embarrassed, looking retarded. He gets up and start beefing with the Mexican dude. The little bitty Mexican dude, because he was a small dude, and Scooter got his hands all the all in the dude's face. You bitch ass nigga, don't ever do that shit again. I fuck you up. You do that shit again, man. Poppy stole on Scooter, yo. <laughs> the little Mexican essay, he stole on Scooter, yo. And then Scooter, Scooter start working on him. The Mexicans jump in. The Spanish dudes jump in. Then the, and then so the you know the dudes the. The, the West Indian brothers jump in and then the, the I guess like the Nietas or whatever seen some Latin brothers fighting so they jumped in and then the dudes from the brotherhood cause Scooter was down with the brotherhood I think they jumped in and before you know it the whole yard is fighting the whole jail is fighting now me and my brother Ken Do the black hand prince he was um if, I don't know if you're familiar with Chaz Williams. He was on American Gangster, yeah. but my but my brother Ken Do, that's his nephew. You know what I'm saying? So me and Do, Black Hand Prince, we sitting there watching the riot. We smoking a joint with our backs against the gate because we watched the whole stupid shit start. We watched with this whole shit started over, and number one, and then number two. I was always taught by the OGs, when you see a crowd like that, shit popping off, you don't run up in no crowd like that, yo. If you there when it happened, you there when it happened. Unless it's your comrade, if you see one of your comrades getting it on and you trying to save them or whatever, 
You don't run up in no crowd like that, yo, because that's the easiest way for you to get stabbed. It's the easiest way to get stabbed in your back. It's the easiest way to get cut from behind. So me and dude literally is smoking a big ass bone, yo. We smoking a big ass bone and we watching the riot. Like that shit is a movie. We watching niggas get punched in their head and now here go the ill shit. So whoever was in the the shack, the athletic shack. Now, you been in the medium. They got a shack in the yard. The, the shack is full of aluminum bats. The shack got bats in it. Well, wooden like bats. Wait, wait. Got curl oh, bars. Curl bar, all kind of shit is in that shack. Yo, whoever was in that shack either left it open or start passing out bats. Oh, my God. You just see dudes in... Dude swinging curl balls, aluminum bats, wooden bats. Who had a passing out to who? The Spanish dudes or the black dudes? No, no, no. It, it, it seemed like it was the black dudes had the bats. But, I mean, it, it was just. it Because by then, you know, the weight pile is close. The weight pile was close. And so somebody done grabbed the dimes and the nickels, the five pound plates, the 10 pound plates. You know, they'd be little three and a half pound plates. They done grabbed. They done deadly. 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 Now niggas are swinging dead weight. Now niggas swinging dead weight. Before it was all over, B, they ship every. They, they finally get, you know, the riot squad out there, whatever have you. The police come out there. They break, they get it broke up as much as they can. Yo, this mad niggas laid out on the ground, bro. Niggas done got hit in their head with bats, metal plates. They done got hit in their head with the curl bar. A couple of dudes got airlifted out the yard. Like they had to bring their helicopter in. Niggas get airlifted out the yard and shipped to the hospital. One dude got his, I think got his eye knocked out the socket. Like, yeah, that shit got super duper funky. How long niggas been so, getting it on for? I mean, to me, it seemed like it went on for, you know, I, I mean, it seemed like forever, but it might have only been seven minutes. But seven minutes is a long time, Hell yo. Oh, yeah. When you think about it in terms of like, think about, the average boxing ring round is three minutes. That's a long time when you're getting your ass whipped, yo. <laughs> so if you're not winning that fight, if you're getting hit with a bat, if you're getting stabbed, if you're getting hit with a metal plate, seven minutes is a long time, yo. And that shit went on for a while. And... In my mind, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Hopefully, I get shipped the fuck up out of here. You know what I'm saying? I hope they start shipping niggas out of here, yo. Man, bro, I was in that jail for almost two years, dog. Yo, for whatever reason, yo, they would not ship me out that jail, dog. Yo, once you and get caught in any of them jails in that whole Clinton hub, Clinton, Franklin, Bear Hill, Altona, Riverview, you trapped. Stuck. Stuck. Stuck, yo. Stuck. I was in that jail for damn near two years, yo. They would not let me out that motherfucker, yo. I mean, if you get, because if they usually, if you wild out there, they're going to send you to governor. Governor only 20 minutes away from Riverview. If you wild out there, if you wild out there, they're going to send you back to Watertown. They gonna keep you in that hub. What was worse? For, what you rather had did? Two years in Watertown or two years in Riverview? Oh man, I ain't gonna front. I think I, I think I would have took Riverview, yo, only because the conditions in Watertown, like just the jail was falling apart, bro. What kind of jail is it though? It's, it's, it's not the New Age dorms. It's like buildings nah, and shit. Nah, nah. It's a, it's domes, it's domes, but it's domes. But I want to say that I guess it's one of the 
oldest or older jails, the older or oldest jails in the hub. And because it's one of the oldest jails in the hub, it probably make it one of the older mediums in the state. And now, and so like, it, it, it was just falling apart. Now see, Riverview was new because it was a city jail. Oh yeah, they Riverview, converted that shit to, they converted right. that shit to a state. They used to take dudes from Rikers Island and send them up to Riverview on a plane, right? Exactly. Exactly. Riverview was a city jail. So if you had to do a bullet, if you had, well, really, if you had two bullets running wow, you had some dudes that had literally, they had, they had copped out to two years, but city time, they might have copped out to a year for this charge. They might have copped out to a year for this charge, but the judge didn't run them concurrent. They ran them consecutive. So now after you finish this one year for this one bid, and then you got to do another year for this bit, and it was it was normally it was normally for misdemeanors. You know what I'm saying? It was normally for Mister for misdemeanors. It was normally for dudes that had higher misdemeanors. You know what I'm saying? Because you could steal a car and get a misdemeanor charge. You could do you could do a petty robbery, like get caught. Like a lot of them niggas that was there was boosters, boosters. Uh, you know, dudes that had they, they might have had a robbery, but it was their first robbery. They might have had a drug case, but it was their first drug case. What you know what I'm saying? Mean, like they they had they had city city charges in there with the state charges at one time. No, no, no. no I mean, when it was a state, when oh. it was a city jail, when it was a city jail, they might have had those like those like high misdemeanor crimes. You know what I'm saying? You know, they got A misdemeanors, B misdemeanors, C misdemeanors, and all that. They had different, you know, levels of misdemeanors. So when it was a city jail, that's what those do. Because my man, Dre Rose, God bless the dead, he had their time up there. You know what I'm saying? And he had told us about how they put him on a plane and sent him to Canada to do a city to do a city bid. He thought he was going to stay on Rikers Island. But, but, that, but that's why Riverview was a new jail. Now, they had shut, they had shut it down for whatever reason for a certain amount of time reclassified it as a state jail and started shipping state inmates to that facility and so like i said i was one of the first dudes there because when i got there the cubes was empty when i got there the cubes was empty the cubes wasn't even full yet the the, 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 the yo the houses wasn't even full yet the, ha- the jail wasn't even full yet. When I got there, it was, I mean, you would be going to jail, and it, it was like seven dudes in my house. Seven to ten dudes in the house. It might be 60 bunks in, you know, like 60 beds in them joints. On each side of the house, like 50, 60 beds on each side of the house. And you said they started bringing mad bloods there too? At a, at a certain point, at a certain point, Cause nine three came. Now that nine Trey is here, now nine Trey is here, and so a lot of the dudes that was on the Allen that became blood in ninety three, they was nine Trey gangsters. They became blood on the Allen in ninety three. Now they starting to come up north. You know what I'm saying, and and they because they might have put some work in on the Allen on some kings they come into the jail and the kings is like yo that dude right there cut one of the brothers on the island or whatever have you but but now the guards is getting involved because they're like yo y'all we like nah y'all not about to jump on me y'all not about y'all not about to jump on me now at this time remember i told you that me and og mac was close me and Mac was close. This is this is in '93. This is at the inception of UBN. You know what I'm saying? This is when Triple O first got started. And so, obviously, um, I done grown close to a lot of the blood dudes because they know about my relationship with O, or they actually 
they get to the jail, you know what I mean? And, and people is telling them like, yo, that's Mac man right there, yo. That's the big homie man right there. That's the big homie man right there. So they, they're gravitating towards me, basically. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the kings is, um, they're classifying me as a blood because a lot of the dudes is coming upstate and they come into my table. But really, yeah, is it true I, that Sun was from the West Coast originally, though? Nah, OG Mac Omar is from 183rd and Creston, yo. Damn, so why niggas be saying that that he was from LA? Nah, he brought nah, shit over? nah. Not to, to my knowledge, that's a that's a negative, yo. That's a negative. Oh, like I said, I met O through John Rambo. You know what I'm saying? And, and at that time. John is like, yo, this one of the older homies from the block. It's an OG from my block. Homies from 183rd, you know what I'm saying? Creston and all that whole area. He's from the third. But he went out there. He went out there. And to my knowledge, he caught a light bed out there. I could be wrong, but I think he caught a light bed out there. And when he caught a light bed out there, he was... Um, you know, kind of associated with those dudes out there. So that that's how he wound up, you know, he seen his vision in that while he was either out there getting money out there. His homie used to get paper. He was out there either getting money out there or and when he was getting money with them dudes, he picked up on their unity, and he picked up on their sense of organization. He picked up on their unity, or he picked up on their sense of organization. Or he caught a bed out there and picked up on the same thing in the jail system out there. Either way, the bro is from the third. So, like I said, at that time, because of because of our, my my association with him from being an adolescent in the full building coming up with bro a lot of those dudes gravitated to me you know the Spanish dudes would be like yo he sangre he sangre <laughs> but but that wasn't the case that wasn't the case at all it was just that I'm God's cypher divine and the dudes that y'all about to attempt to oppress is a black man and y'all not about to be oppressing dudes because y'all can and so at the time the gods were still structured throughout the state the gods still had strengths in certain facilities they still had strength and the Muslims had strength and so when the when those Latin gangs began to grow in stature. The gods and the Muslims began to come to an accord. And that accord was we need to move together because these dudes is moving together. They got the numbers. And if we if we stay divided, we're going to lose simply if we stay divided, we're going to find ourselves continuously outnumbered. And so the gods and the Muslims came together. We, we came to an understanding. We're going to protect yours. You're going to protect ours. We have, we have uh, you know, mutual reasons why we should be allies. We don't have no reasons that we should be enemies and we should not allow uh, ideology or religious philosophy to continue to to divide us. And so at that point, we came together and we started moving together. You know what I'm saying? And so now, at that time, again, there was a set in the jail called the Brotherhood when a bunch of black dudes had came together just for that reason and, and that reason alone you know what I'm saying and, and and I'm not even going front they was moving off of like you know they was moving off of like a lot of uh, 
real solid ideology. And they wasn't really just like gang banging or trying to create a gang. They was moving off of black nationalism. They was moving off of Garveyites, being Garveyites and, 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 and Marcus Garvey's uh, uh, theology. And um, you know, their whole ethos, their whole ethos was for everybody to, for black men to unite and protect each other from any forms of oppression. And so, when, like I said, dudes start coming to the jail, and they would be blood, and the kings would be like, oh, oh he sung today, they cut one of the brothers on the island, and we like, yeah, all right, Joe, but y'all was, cutting, y'all was cutting dudes too, so if you got a problem with him, you go get your knife, we're gonna give him a knife, and they could do their thing. Simple. It's not even complicated, but it's not going to be 20 of y'all piling up on him because he dolo. And y'all not going to be running niggas out the jail just because they black. We not having that shit either. And so that's pretty much what it will become at a certain point. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was nasty up in that spot. I seen multiple riots in Riverview. And I mean multiple riots. I seen multiple riots go down, and, and, and again, I used to be like, yo, why these niggas ain't shipped me out of this motherfucker yet, yo? They will not ship me out this bum ass shit, man. Then one time, I go to the box. I just knew they was gonna ship me out to jail this time. I go to the box because this white boy then went to the police and told the police that I assaulted him. Now, I ain't assault him. I ain't assault the dude at all. I don't claim work I ain't do. Um, this dude named Tizo, Terrence from um, he used to be down with the Callies. He 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 was he he from the Supreme Team era. He was a money getting dude in the town. You know what I'm saying? But the the white boy pulled out a banger on Tizo. He pulled out a banger on him, but he was trying to, he was trying to impress Tizo by showing him that he had a banger. Tizo slapped the shit out of him and took the banger from him. Like, yo, give me that, man. What the fuck is you doing with this? He slapped fire out the white boy and took the banger from him. Boom. I'm in the day room watching MTV jams. No question. <laughs> I'm watching. You remember that back in the days, MTV jams. Yeah, yeah. That was the that was the the one time during MTV where they play all the hip hop and R and B. So at that time, I never forget Jade, Jade, that singing group Jade with the three girls. Don't walk away. I'm watching the chicks on the video. I'm open looking at the shorties. Homeboy get the shit slapped out of him while I'm while I'm watching the videos. The next day I'm in business administration. I was like a, a student tutor teaching business administration. And while I'm teaching business administration, about eight police, about eight police come running up in the um they come running up in the motherfucking classroom. Niggas handcuffed me, threw me up against the wall, and they was mad aggressive. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? I don't even know what's going on, you know? They throw me on the wall, search me down or whatever have you, take me to the box. The white boy, instead of telling on Tizo, he done told the police that I slapped him. Not only did he tell the police that I slapped him, but then he went to <laughs> he sent somebody a kite talking about yo, tell Tizo I ain't tell on him. <laughs> and Nick's is like, yeah, you ain't tell on him, you bitch ass nigga. You told on Malik. Yo, I was in the box for like sixty days for a, for an assault that I did not commit. But I went to the hammer, man. Right? And I beat the ticket because he told a, he told a lieutenant 
that I punched him in his face and did all this other shit, right? And so, Lieutenant, this is how I played him. He asked me, he said, I'm going to ask you one question, and I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. He like, are you a five percenter? I'm like, I'm not five percent of anything. I'm a hundred percent. I am a hundred percent a part of the nation of gods and earths. I am not five percent of anything. I said, I am a hundred percent a part of the nation of Islam. He said, Do you? He said, Do you? Do you believe the white man is is the devil? I said, I believe the devil is a mentality. If you commit acts of devilish men, then that would make you a devil. If you commit acts of evil, for the sake of evil, that would make you a devil. I said, devil is means pure evil. You take the D off a of devil, D stands for divine. After that, it's evil, divine evil pure evil if you are pure evil then you would be a devil your lieutenant let me out the box I beat the ticket straight like that <laughs> I, beat, I beat the ticket the lieutenant let me out the they box they still made you lay up for 60 days yeah man or they gave you 60 it, days first no, no, no I laid up that long before I beat the ticket oh cause you had an appeal in on the ticket Nah, I ain't even get, I ain't even like have like the hearing and none of that shit. Like, like it took them that long. Like they, I know they supposed to like do the ticket like in 30 days or some shit like that. But they came up with some meatball ass reason of why not to have my hearing. Um, They came up with some meatball reason like not to, have, why not to have my hearing. And after that, um, I was just laying up in the box, waiting for my hearing, literally. I just laid up in the box, waiting for my hearing. It wasn't that I got I got um, served on the ticket, on the slug. They just had me laying up. That's crazy. They had me laying up. They got their ways of delaying shit. And so I remember they, they um, I had told the, the lieutenant that came down the gallery in the shoe. I was like, yo, um, it's been over 30 days. I'm supposed to have a hearing or y'all supposed to let me go. Man, that white man came back with a piece of paper with a bunch of bullshit written on, on it, talking about, oh, well, we can keep you in the box for this reason if, if this occurs or if that occurs. And they came up with, with some reason to keep me in the box longer than they should have or whatever have you. But by the time I went to the hearing and I broke all that shit down, how they had viol- violated protocol and all that. And then I also told the devil, like, yo, listen, I've been in this jail for two years. You ain't never heard my name. He said, what that mean? I said, if I was stupid enough to do some stupid shit like this, you would have heard my name by now. You ain't never heard my name. I've been in this jail for two years. You ain't never heard my name. I ain't even got a bunch of tickets. You ain't heard my name. I don't get into dumb shit, especially not dumb shit like this. And the lieutenant, that nigga let me go, yo. That nigga let me go. And then right then, like shortly after that, my classification dropped. My classification dropped again. And where I get shipped to? Yeah, my classification dropped. And oh, nah, what happened was I blew my ACL. I blew my ankle playing basketball. And... I pretty much had the crazy lawsuit because the police tried to jump me in the clinic while I was on crutches. I'm telling the police, I need to see the doctor. I see the doctor. The doctor tells me no programs for for 90 days or 60 days or however long until they could give me an MRI. The doctor tells me no programs, right? I go to the clinic to get something the nurse talking about you got to go to programs. I'm like, yo, you're a fucking nurse. You don't supervise. You don't supersede the doctor. You're not a doctor. You're a nurse. You don't supersede that. I got the paperwork right here to say no programs from the doctor. She's telling me, well, oh, I'm writing another one. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you write. You're not a doctor. You're a nurse. The police coming there trying to tell me you're going to do what the nurse tells you. So, you know, one thing about that jail shit is they have a clause called medical confidentiality. You have the right to speak to medical staff without 
security present. The police could stand outside the they could stand outside the room with the door cracked, maybe, but you have the right to talk about your medical issues without the police present. So he got tight because I knew what I was talking about. I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, at this point, man, I'm gonna go ahead and invoke my right to medical confidentiality, and I don't want to talk to you about anything related to to medicine. I don't want to talk to you about anything related to my medical treatment or anything related to anything about about me being in this clinic right now. You don't know what you're talking about. She is a nurse and she don't supersede what the doctors say. Needless to say, homeboy, go get the sergeant. Now, they call themselves escort me to the box because I'm refusing the program. I'm like, I'm not going to programs. I'm, I'm not going to programs and I already got the paperwork so y'all can take me to the box, do what you gotta do. I'm not going to programs. The police surround me. And when they take me, they take me like into the draft room, but I'm on crutches. They surround me in the draft room. And it just so happened that this white lady, or that white lady probably saved my life. This white lady, she was one of the nurses. She was one of the nurses and I snapped on the police because he was in my face talking some nonsense and I like jumped at him like the fuck out my face man and he backed up all scared and shit so oh, I'll, I'll fucking pop you I'll pop you one I'm like yo whatever man just get the fuck out my face man take me back to, to the dorm yo but they ain't trying to take me to SHU and I'm like, all right, well, do what you got to do because the doctor's going to overturn all this. And even if he don't, I got the papers that say no programs for how for, for, until I until I see the doctor again. This is how, like, even in today's society, how people get fucked up in these hospitals because white people love to use they'll, they'll exercise racism in medical treatment. And that's what this this nurse was doing. She was trying to exercise her, her racism and said through my medical treatment. And so when the white lady came out and she seen the police have me surrounded, she looked at the sergeant and was like, he's on crutches. And it's it's seven police standing around me. She just looked at him like he's on crutches. And she stood there almost as if to say, I'm gonna be a witness to this. And that's the only reason they probably didn't beat the shit out of me. That's the only reason they ain't beat they ain't beat the shit out of me. And I went back to my dorm. And shortly after that, I had my people call the jail and run down on the warden. I had the lawyer call the jail. My people's in the lawyer call the jail. And then they I sent them the paperwork, you know what I'm saying, from the doctor. And the next thing you know, they were shipping me out of that motherfucker. And it was only the only the threat of a legitimate lawsuit is the only reason I got out of that hub, yo. Cause you, like you just said, once you in that hub, they not moving you out of that hub. It's, you it's, like, it's like a disciplinary hub. They send you that's there it. when you a fuck up. The base, base, that's what I said. It's a fuck up jail. It's a fuck up jail, and in, in, in their mind, it's a fuck up jail. But in my mind, I'm like, yo, from from green, cause in green, I ain't really do that much while. And I mean, I poked something up when I was in green, but I ain't gonna front like I was like I was really doing the the, the wilding, cause I really wasn't. But my little man's was off the fucking meter. And the funny shit is, they ain't even shipped them out to jail. They stayed. They stayed, Maine stayed in green. They stayed in green. I got shipped out the spot. Where, where he was but, from in Harlem? Maine, baby Maine, come out of Lincoln Projects. Baby Maine, come off of the east side of Harlem. He come out of Lincoln Projects. And so I was just, I really liked him. I really liked the young boy because, you know, we, we used to talk and I was a young boy at the time still but if I was if I was 19 if I was 19 maybe he was 17 you know what I'm saying and so now the role it's almost like the role 
of me having a boogaloo have reversed. Now I'm I'm a little bit older and a little bit more experienced, and I'm really just handing them the shit that they really shouldn't be doing. Like I mean, like if, if y'all gonna be doing shit, man, you're not gonna be stealing from niggas. Like I'm not gonna have that shit. I'm not gonna. I can't fuck with you if you're gonna be stealing from niggas and all that. So we're not doing that. I mean, and and they was young. Like him and GU, they both was young. So you know what I mean. I ain't knocking for that. But as soon as I told them. Robbery over thievery, them niggas lost their minds. And I think ultimately that's why they shipped me out of green because I, I just just sit back and they used to be, they always used to be in my cube. They were, they would always come to my cube and come kick it with me. And so, like, but with, with that said, that they would come to my cube, that they would come to my cube and come kick it with me, you know, dudes probably told them, like, yo. That nigga right there is the leader of the pack. He telling them what to do or whatever have you. But I never pointed at nobody and was like, yeah, go take his shit. That shit wasn't, that shit ain't float my boat. That wasn't my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like that, because I'm a hustler. I'm, I'm, I'm a hustler. Me, me, myself, I'm I'm always getting one type of package, some type of package, one type of package or another. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't dog food, it was something else. I'm getting one type of package or another, and I'm moving that around the jail. I'm not, I'm not sneak thieving. I'm not stealing. I'm not. I don't do none of that dumb shit. That shit was never my mo. Never ever. Not in not in no jail I ever been been to. That shit was never my mo. Like not once. Once I got up north, that shit wasn't my mo. That shit wasn't never my m. Now my homies all over the state my homies was robbers my man big shocky james big shy and the cat that nigga big shy run up in your cell with a draft bag my homie big shy run right up in your cell word he 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 he, uh, he robbed my man tyson he snatched tyson chain big shy was on his shit a couple of dudes was on their shit straight robbers taking shit they were straight robbers they was on the shit that they was on which shot but, are you talking about the shot I'm talking about his name Shot. They call him Sharky James. Wait, he from home? Nah, Big Shot was from BK. I, I met I met Big Shot in the four building, eighty nine. He was in four upper. You talking about? You ain't talking about son from Van Dyke. He got a gold front in his mouth. He do got gold fronts in his mouth. But he was diesel though. Yeah, brolic nigga. Yeah, I was he in. Was I was in yeah, I was in Franklin with son. Big shot. That nigga was. <laughs> that's the nigga. That's the nigga that nigga said. That nigga used to be in the streets controlling phone time on the Allen. In the Yo, four building. That nigga shot was strong. That nigga shot was strong. I'm, I'm not even going front one time. When he snatched my man chain. So my man had just came off the visit. His, his grandmother came to see him. His grandmother gave him the chain. The grandmother passed away like shortly after he got the chain. Sha caught him in the yard. He caught him for the chain, yapped him. He tried to get it on with Sha, but Sha was a he, He's a big muscular dude, but incredibly intelligent, yo. Incredibly intelligent, yo. And so Sha caught him. Like you talking about? Yeah. This is in Kasaki where he caught homeboy for the chain in the yard. And so I went to shop because that's my man, my man. So I'm like, yo, shop, man. Get that nigga's chain back, man. Cut that bullshit out, man. That nigga, my, nigga grandma's gave him that shit, man. We get you something else. Like, don't worry about that shit. Like, like there's so much shit moving around the jail. We get you something else, I'm saying. And he said the realest shit to me that I could never refute. Yo, son. Baby boy. A robber don't take to give back. <laughs> it was nothing I could. It was nothing I could say to refute that statement. He was like, "Yo, baby boy, you my little brother, man. You my little man, yo. But a robber don't take shit to give it back, man." He said, "Yo, listen, man. I get a nigga a shot at the title. He go gun to gun." If he want his shit back, you know what I'm saying? He, I wear the chain, and we can go gun to gun. And if he get the chain back, he get it back. I wear the chain, you know what I'm saying? Give him a shot at it, but I'm not giving it back to him. And yeah, I, I, I had to respect that. 
I had to respect that. He like, yo, son, you know the rules. If you can hold it, you can have it. You got to hold it, yo. You got to be holding it. You can't be running around here with chains and all that shit on. And, and you ain't prepared for a nigga to take your shit. He's like, I caught the nigga slipping. He wasn't paying attention. You know what I'm saying? I caught him. Wait, well, yapped him? That was, yeah, he yapped him. He yapped him. He caught him in. I don't know. I, don't, I, I think he caught him in the yard. I, 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 as far as I recall, that shit happened in the yard. But big shot, you know. Like I said, it was dude. I came up with dudes that was robbers, niggas that are straight take your shit. You know what I'm saying? But again, me myself, I always had the respect of the illest dudes. Not because I was incredibly valid like everybody else they know I could, I could hold my own or whatever have you like I said I ain't scared of you or I'm scared of what I do to you they always respected my intelligence and they always respected the way I move you know what I'm saying I always had I always bring back a plate for everybody bro some dudes get a plate for themselves. you know what I'm saying I'm sure you know plenty of those some dudes get a plate and they bring back a plate for they self. But when I bust my move, I'm bringing back a plate for the gang, yo. Because that's how I came up in my hood. We don't hustle for Dolo. I got a whole team I got to pay. I got a whole team that want to eat. If I got a whole team that want to eat, an ounce ain't going to help. Ain't going to help us. A little bitty ounce or something, that ain't gonna help us. We need the whole thing, daddy O. If anybody gonna eat, that's how we was raised up. You bring something back for the pack, or don't bring back nothing at all, yo. Because if, if you don't bring back something for the pack, how the pack looking at you? In most cases, the pack looking at you like fool. But when you got the, the if you thinking we us instead of I me, most of those dudes that be thinking I me, they usually get robbed. If you thinking we us, then you bring something back for the pack. And the pack don't want to do nothing to protect you because they know like, nah, bro, always bring it back. This nigga make sure everybody good. And not because I had to, but because I chose to. It's a mindset. It's completely a mindset. The most race shit happened in that river shit, yo. Like the further the they send you away from New York, the more racy it get. Yeah, man. That, 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 like that 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 racial shit, man. That racial shit was popping in Riverview, Governor, Watertown. All that shit was like it used to be race riots all the time. And and the real shit is that I'm Puerto Rican, man. My mom's is Puerto Rican. I, I don't even see y'all niggas like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't see y'all as the enemy because you uh, because you Latino. That's retarded. I, I don't see you as my enemy because you a Latino. Yeah, I'm, I'm black and Puerto Rican too. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like Nori said, nigga, nigga, Rican. Like, what the fuck I... What the fuck I'm gonna flip on you because you, you, you cause of you, cause of the way you was born. That is some ignorant bullshit. That is some ignorant bullshit. I was never, never like wanted to be privy to that shit. And you know, like the ill shit is, me and this one kid got cool because, you know, uh, his moms came up on a visit with my moms, and his moms was telling, was telling him. Like yo, that you know that, that his mother is Puerto Rican. He speaks Spanish, <laughs> like, and so a lot of times those certain spots, if they did find out, they would be leery. Like yo, you gotta watch that nigga right there. Watch what you say around him, yo, cause he know what you saying. Watch what you say around homie, cause he know what you saying, yo. And so, like I said, I never was, I never cared for. I never care for racist and I never care for racism, no kind of racism. If I don't care for black on black crime, why the fuck I'm gonna care for racism itself? That shit is nah, it's just meatball. It's just crazy meatball. I never care for none of that dumb shit.
All this dirt I never let my mama know Hit a lick of brick, it's like a pot of gold Your girl wants to meet me Your man's a snitch, they got him on PC My son is in GP Playing some cards or watching some TV Hey yo, I told y'all before My bro Dub H.E. out of Baltimore Spit that fire You heard, go follow him on Instagram And tell him Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man Sent you